Welcome to this Winair video on a topic that fascinates five-year-olds. Poop. Have you ever wondered where it all goes? That's what we're going to explore today. When we flush, where does the waste go? We know it goes to a sewer, then to a treatment plant, but where does it actually go? This is a story of Windsor's water treatment system. Well, not just Windsor's, but wastewater treatment plants in general. Water treatment facilities are an important part of infrastructure in any community. As our population grows, so does the stress on infrastructure to manage it. Roads get crowded, available housing shrinks, and more water is flushed down toilets, sinks, tubs, and drains. This caused a problem. Windsor experienced significant flooding with major events occurring in 2016 and 2017. In September 2016, 200 millimeters, or almost 8 inches of rain fell in just 4 hours, overwhelming pumps and sewer systems. In August 2017, two days of heavy rainfall led to the largest single flood event in Windsor's history, affecting 6,000 basements. The impacts of these floods were severe. Streets were lined with piles of carpet, furniture, drywall, and insulation from basements. What a mess it was! The extreme rainfall contributed to the floods, but it was not the sole cause. Windsor's century-old sewer systems were simply unable to manage the increased water volume. Windsor had a capacity of 2.8 million gallons and maintains over 90 miles of sewer lines. However, as of February 2025, the facility's capacity was expanded to treat up to 6.3 million gallons per day. This expansion was necessary to accommodate the increasing wastewater demands of our growing city. That's a cool thing. So does that mean no more flooding? And where does it all go? And when it reaches capacity, what then? Good questions. Let's step back and explore from when we flush our toilets to the time the water reappears clean and usable. When we flush, the water and waste begins a journey through a complex network of pipes and systems to reach the wastewater treatment plant. It travels through your home's sewage pipes and connects to the sewer main running under the street. The sewer mains are designed with a slight downward slope, allowing gravity to move the sewage in the right direction. As the pipes join, they become larger and continue to slope downward, keeping the material flowing. In cases where the distance to the treatment plant is significant and the pipes become too deep, lift stations are used. These stations pump the sewage from the lower pipes to higher underground pipes where gravity takes over again. In some areas, especially those with varying terrain, pumping stations are necessary to move the sewage from lower areas to higher points in the system. Wastewater treatment plants are typically located in the lowest areas of a region to take advantage of gravity flow. This system efficiently transports wastewater from homes and businesses to treatment facilities, combining gravity-powered flow with strategic pumping to ensure proper sewage management across various terrains and distances. The sewage eventually reaches the wastewater treatment plant, where it undergoes various processes to remove contaminants. Now it gets interesting. But first, I'd like to ask for your subscription. It is free and helps support this channel. I appreciate the help. Thanks. Now back to where the poop goes. First, the water treatment plant removes bulky items like wood, rocks and debris using bar screens to prevent damage to equipment. It then goes through a grit removal where fine particles like sand and coffee grounds are separated from the water in grit chambers. Then a primary clarification where wastewater enters large settling tanks where heavier organic solids sludge, sink to the bottom while lighter materials scum float to the surface. Both are removed. The water is exposed to air, replenishing oxygen, 
and keeping organic material suspended. This process also releases unpleasant odors. In the secondary treatment, microorganisms break down organic matter in aeration tanks, forming heavier particles that can easily be removed. Then, a secondary clarification, where the water enters another set of settling tanks to remove the remaining suspended solids. We're almost there, but it's time for disinfection. This is done with chlorine, UV light, or ozone to kill harmful bacteria and other pathogens. There is a final testing of the treated water to ensure it meets environmental standards before being discharged. The clean, treated water is finally released back into the environment, typically into a local body of water, in our case, the Detroit River. That's cool, but it doesn't answer where does the poop go. Okay, here it is. Throughout the water treatment process, the removed solids, or sludge, undergo a separate treatment, including thickening and digestion, before being disposed of or used to create valuable byproducts like biogas and fertilizer. That's almost the end of the story. However, next spring, when you buy a bag of fertilizer for the garden, grow nice vegetables, and enjoy a great meal, you'll be ready to sit down and start the process all over again. I hope you enjoyed this informational video. Like and subscribe. This is Bob Jones, and I will see you in the next video.